total this year is 2024 NBA Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Robert Bowen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good job, <boys. laughs> You know, uh, I just saw notes in advance, but really I wanted to watch all your videos uh, tonight to see kind of the state of the league. And honestly, God, yeah, this comes from the heart. And my favorite part of being a mascot was the mascot conference every year because I got to be around like-minded people and often felt on an island at the Rockets, but the one uh, safe bastion was that couple days where we got to spend together. And if I was in that room and still working mascot, I would have filled up a notebook and would have taken at least three or four ideas from every single person's video here. This profession has not lost a step. In fact, it has gone up. Uh, I first want to thank Wayne. Uh, he stepped in eight years ago uh, to take over for me after 21 years. And um, I think the Rockets were kind of sick of me, to be honest. Uh, they were sick of something, buddy pushing for things and wanting to do innovative things. And at times, got a few complaints and tired of hearing me like a broken record saying 18,000 people laughed, three uh, complained, shut up. Is that how we're going to run our business? And uh, I think they were looking for a yes man. And I'm sure they didn't get it based on what I just saw in that room and what I saw last year. And I'm just so happy. I know it was a topic of conversation a lot when I was a mascot about our legacy and what we'd like to see, whether we'd like to see the character go away altogether and then start a new one because we did it so uniquely, uh, or if that, that character would live on just with somebody else's uh, rendition of it. And I'm so happy that somebody like Wayne stepped in and put a completely different spin on it. Yes, please. Um, I mean, his athleticism, 
by far uh, exceeds mine, obviously, his dance ability. But it's not just that. At first, when we sat down eight years ago for lunch, uh, I was just told, yeah, they're bringing in some guy that's really athletic and can dance, but as you can see from his videos, he's got a great creative mind. Uh, he takes risks. He pushes the envelope. Uh, I mean, that front handspring uh, half-court shot is just unbelievable. Uh, he's brought out the best of entertainers around him. Mike Truffle was with me for years as my game night uh, guy under Dominic, and we all know Dominic was with me for 17 years full time, and we loved each other like brothers and fought like brothers. Uh, I would not have been able to achieve nearly what I did without Dominic, uh, and that's sincere. Uh, so thank you, Lane, for taking the baton forward and uh, not just maintaining, but making Clutch even bigger and better. And my daughter Bailey here is telling me, hey dad, that was really great, all those videos we saw. Uh, this has been a great night, but we already saw all of your crap, so wrap it up. <laughs> um, couple thank yous, thank you Spencer. I know how hard it is to put this together, uh, not only time-wise, but also juggling and balancing the needs of so many different people with diverse needs and diverse talents. Uh, thank you for hosting this in Orlando. Uh, when I did it in 2014, I vowed that I would never do it again. Thankfully, I got fired two years later and was never asked to do it again. Um, <laughs> Um, a lot of the vets, man, I, I see a lot of new faces here, but I see a lot of old faces. And when I say old, I mean old faces. Uh, <laughs> that I can honestly call some of my best friends in life uh, that I have vacationed with, uh, that I spend my personal time and money with. Jack, uh, you know, I, we were talking earlier, I was out to Portland at one time like five times in one year. Um, so it, cherish these moments and these relationships as I know you do. Uh, John, Eric, uh, Mark Taylor just landed a little bit ago. And just to speak to the type of character that he has, he, when he heard I was getting this, uh, asked me if it would be cool if he flew in and said a few words. And I was moved to tears that he would fly all the way from his house on his own dime to do so. He just landed a few minutes ago because of weather and was delayed. Uh, but those are the type of friends that you make in this business. Um, I saw a lot of brand new ideas tonight on that screen. I saw some old ideas, but then were completely redone with a new spin, making them new ideas. Uh, which was really cool to see, uh, and just interesting. I, I can't wait to see what you guys continue to do uh, in this business. And uh, it just reminded me that being a mascot, once you've done it for a few years, it's in your blood, and it's in your blood forever. And if you're doing this at a really high level, like everybody in this room is, because the NBA has the best mascots in the world. Uh, that's not, you know, to placate to the audience, it just is. And part of it is not because of us, it's because we're thrown into this situation where we're given this opportunity of 12 breaks a game, a hard floor, five seconds from back of stage to center court, a video board, an MC, a DJ, uh, all these things that you don't quite have in hockey, baseball, or football. And I think kind of one hand washes the other. Those criteria led back in the, the mid-90s to these people in this room being what I would regard as the best entertainers in the world. Uh, and I jotted a few words down, but I was just looking around the room while you were all watching the videos, and I was too. Uh, you're, you're improv artists, you're sketch artists, you're athletes, you're gymnasts, you're stuntmen, you're writers, you're brand managers, you're business people. I've always thought this job was a lot like Saturday Night Live. If you were doing it really good, and if you watch some of those skits there, I would put them up against some of the best SNL sketches, sketches that there are. And the only difference is, is you have to be Warren Michaels, Tina Fey, the producers, and the star. You have to run all of those roles. 
uh, by yourself. There is nobody defending the writers above them and, and keeping the networks at bay. You're doing that for yourself. And that can be really tough and lonely. And, and I had a conversation with an active mascot uh, recently, and he expressed a lot of his trials and tribulations, and I felt like it was the same conversation from 1995. So I really hesitate to say any of us old guys were trailblazers because the same battles are still being fought uh, to do new, innovative, not cute, not safe, not bland, not vanilla, but family-friendly entertainment that hits on two levels. So that dad, that 35 to 55-year-old core demographic of our sports fans and season ticket holders is laughing, but for a different reason, than his seven-year-old daughter, who just heard me say the F word. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, hats off to you guys for keeping it going, uh, making it even better than I remember it. Um, something like this, I can't stress, means the world to me because the career meant the world to me. Um, having my children here means a lot to me. My boys grew up, uh, in this business, their mother, who uh, I'm thankful to call one of my best friends in the world that I consult on any major life decision, is still an integral part of my life. And they grew up doing sketches and skits from baby races on up to Superman and Clark Kent. And uh, the one year when Batman and uh, vs. Superman premiered, I had a game that night. I remember I was with Ray and uh, Jack 